check out what I got the keys to right here. Ready? Y'all not ready? Three, two, one. The Aston Martin Vantage and the F1 Edition. Hold up, hold up. But all blacked out. I mean, we got like this Bruce Wayne thing going on, which is ridiculous. And the price is at one hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's before market adjustment. <laughs> one hundred eighty-six thousand dollars. Ah, not bad. Not bad. Take a look at the inside real quick. Oh my gosh. Wow. Alcatara suede carbon fiber. I mean, this is what every sports car should have, period. So when it comes to doing automotive photography for dealerships, I respect the limit. I only add between five to 10 miles back and forth when it comes to moving out these cars because the whole point is to sell these cars with low mileage. In fact, these cars come with low mileage. Like, let me show you this real quick, ready? So this Vantage only has 22 miles. Ooh, let's turn that off before I get copyrighted. 22 miles. So with 22 miles on the dash, I want to be very careful because if I bring it back with 50 or 40, <laughs> that's, that's a lot. So I do my research very thoroughly. I look around what's around the area and I find cool spots like the one I'm about to take you guys that's literally like two streets away. So let's go ahead and let's drive over there. Now, because I'm very tall, I need to adjust the seat lower. All right, backing it up to the spot. Well, in my mind, I know exactly how it should be angled just because I've done this a million times. So I really never need to park the car, step out, look at the background, and then come back in the car and adjust it. It's just all in my mind already. Let me step outside. Okay, yeah, this is hard. So when it comes to shooting detail shots and wide shots, I'm mainly in between two lenses, and it is my 24 to 70, my G Master, which you guys probably heard me say a million times. And then for my detail shots, it is the 70 to 200. So along with those two lenses, I'm also using Polar Pro's ND CPL filters uh, for the 72 or 24 to 70 lens and the 70 to 200. They both have a different size on top of the lens that needs to fit. So which is why I have two. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I start off with the 7200, just because um, I actually do have a feeling that security might come up and kick me out, and I could get away with my exterior shots and a bunch of detail shots with this, rather than just getting a bunch of exterior shots with my 24 to 70. All right, let's get it. I'm gonna step back right here, make sure I hit the 100 mark. I'm pretty far from the car. I'm gonna squat down and take the shot. For my camera settings, I'm on 1 100th for my shutter speed, my f-stop 4, and ISO 50. Yes, I said 50 because you can hit 50 with Sony, but you can only hit 100 with Canon. Um, fun fact if you didn't know, now you know. Let me adjust the steering wheel. Cool. Make sure those tail lights are on. And there we go. So when it comes to automotive car photography, you see how I take my angles, you see which lens I use, and you also see which filters I use on top of the lens to make sure that I'm using the most amount of this that I can, if that makes sense. Other than that, if you learned something or enjoyed the video, make sure to not subscribe nor even hit that like button because why not? Other than that, it's Daniel from Velvado, and I'll see you guys all on the next YouTube video. Stay care, stay care. Take care, stay blessed. I'll see you guys later. Peace.